Australia's Navy divers are the best of the best and Nine News has been given exclusive access to see them training in Sydney for one of their most difficult and hazardous jobs. The big new support ships, HMAS Canberra and Adelaide, mean our armed forces now have a longer reach and better equipment than ever. But underwater, divers still face primeval dangers. At first, they're just shadows. Then, out of the wet, silky darkness, their figures emerge. The fittest of the fit, fully equipped for battle. Under a full moon, we're witnessing the Navy's elite clearance divers, the Maritime Tactical Operations Unit in action. But this isn't a foreign battlefield, it's suburban Sydney, where, under the cover of darkness, we're given a rare glimpse of the men who were trained to never be seen. Training for, for war at the end of the day, um, hopefully it doesn't come to that. But uh, as we've seen in the past, uh, in recent history, it does come to that and uh, we do what we can. Before training begins, equipment is checked in their bunker on the northern beaches. We have our beach profiling technology and sonar to be able to help us find any sort of mines or obstacles or bombs underwater. They have specially designed camouflage wetsuits and amphibious weaponry. They look like mates because they are. These men live, work and train together and ultimately hold each other's lives in their hands. They're training to clear beaches and enable amphibious access, um, whether that's for support for humanitarian aid missions right through to high-level conflict clearing of mines on the beaches. Today, Pittwater is their makeshift battlefield amongst the yachts and luxury homes. They do as they would in war, travel by boat, then climb into the Zodiacs a few kilometres from shore. The men who will be first to assess the hostile terrain are prepared, moving swiftly and silently, weapons at the ready. They coordinate positions and roll as one into the water. A few moments to acclimatise, ready their dive gear, then they disappear below the surface where the real work begins. As cold and as dark as it is out here, it's hard to imagine what it must be like below the surface. The Navy divers can spend hours underwater at a time. In combat, they're clearing sea mines and looking for other obstacles. But even here on pit water, there are dangers. In these conditions, visibility is practically zero and you never know what lurks beneath. Recently, as one diver searched for an item on the seabed, his sonar lit up with a distant silhouette. So I just kept swimming towards it and at about 20 metres I realised this could be moving. I thought it's pretty large. <laughs> when the five or six metre shark revealed itself, it was just 10 metres from Dylan who swam quickly to the surface. The next day I was back, back in the water, so yeah, have to get over that, have to get over that stuff, yeah. But the risks are real. In 2009, Navy diver Paul de Gelder lost a leg and hand when he was attacked by a bull shark on a routine diving operation in Sydney Harbour. What they're preparing for, though, is even more terrifying. We train for the worst situation, so using our weapons, our radios, and all this equipment is designed for amphibious operations. So it's um, when we come out of the water, we're fully functional and uh, ready to do our job. And the rest of the Navy is relying on them to secure the landing zone before anyone else follows. It's uh, something I didn't think I could do, and it's uh, something that I'm very proud to do, and something that I'm proud that I've achieved. Jane has a party. Nine News.